Good day fellow investors. If you love dividends, you love this video. This is the first part of the two-part analysis of 20 European good companies with dividend yields above 5%. Yes, 5%. I'll give you 20 dividend investing ideas. I'll shortly discuss the stocks and then you'll see if it fits your investment portfolio or risk-reward appetite. So let's immediately start with the first stock. The first stock is Agon, my mortgage provider. So it's a multinational life insurance. 60% of the profits come from the US. So it's not a European insurer, but a US insurer, but trading in Europe. So that might lead to some people not looking really at the company. Nevertheless, it looks like a good company. If you look at the fundamentals over the last 10 years, there has been growth, but it's normal for an insurer to have volatile revenue and earnings. Earnings also volatile. They are a bit to the high, the trailing earnings. However, their dividends, and if you're interested in a dividend, have been pretty stable and have been growing over the past five years. What's very interesting about Aegon is that it has a price to book value of 0.4. This is mostly because investors have had a concern about Aegon's solvency. However, that has been solved in the last few quarters. Nevertheless, the stock price is still low. We can see here how the group solvency ratio increases significantly to 185%, was below 150%. Return on equity improved, everything is improving. So the main risk with Aegon is a crisis in Europe and in Americas. Nevertheless, if things continue as they are and there is no recession, you can buy the company and you can expect a nice steady dividend. With higher interest rates, insurers should benefit. So if we see that, then there is again a positive for Aegon. Even inflation would be a positive. So very interesting to look at insurers for high dividend yields. The second company I want to discuss is Atrium European Real Estate that has a dividend yield of 6.35%. This is a company that focuses on shopping centers in Eastern Europe, Poland, Czech Republic, and Slovakia mostly. The tenants are very good, H&M, Zara, very good European retailers. They have a growth strat strategy, so they are continuing to invest, expanding. And now this is the issue of retail. Should you invest in retail? The US, no, but nobody likes retail now. However, in Eastern Europe, retail is still growing and people are still going to those shopping centers, shopping malls. In the summer, to get air conditioned in the winter, at least to be warm. So those numbers are good. Those numbers are expected to grow. Eastern Europe is still growing, developing, so it might be a good dividend investment. Nevertheless, we'll discuss, I think, three more shopping centers that might be even better and better suited for you. So keep watching. Number five is Bink Bank. Not such a good investment, but still has a dividend yield of 5.17%. Let's see what it is. Big Bank is an independent Dutch online discount broker. The dividend is high and the payout ratio is above 400%. So it's questionable whether the dividend is sustainable. The company has been heavily investing. However, growth has failed to arrive. Discount broker, a lot of competition, better brokers coming online. So it's not really a sustainable dividend. And you can see what happened to the stock price continued downtrend for the last eight, nine years. Therefore, avoid being bank for now. Other companies that have high dividend yields are postal services. As we all know, you send an email now and you don't send a letter. So their revenues are significantly declining. However, there are some interesting stocks that might have show a turnaround, especially as e-commerce is growing and parcel delivery is growing, and what they have is an infrastructure there to service that. So let's dig into some postal companies too. The first company I want to talk about is Belgian Post. Hasn't really grown in the last 10 years, as you can see, revenue mostly flat. However, dividends are growing, so it's a cash cow. It will be milked as long as possible. So what you have to calculate is for how long will those cash flows continue and then see if it fits what you want. Similarly to postal companies, BT Group 5.15%, another cash cow that is about to be milked and continue 
to be milked. My issue with telecoms is that sooner or later we'll expect communication for free. What does it cost you to watch this YouTube video? Zero. What does it cost you to send something to me in the comments? Zero. What does it cost to call you on Skype, WhatsApp? Zero, zero. So I see that telecoms will have very, very difficult time to make money and be profitable as they used to be 10, 20 years ago. So therefore also an investment to really buy when the cash flow coming is immediately satisfying. 5% is still low, especially as there are growth companies that also offer 5%. Now let's see another postal service, but with potential. So we have to see if the management will deliver. Correiros de Portugal has a postal business that offers a yield of 4.57%. Okay, not higher than 5, but still relatively high. And you can see here that the infrastructure is extremely high and they're investing in a new financial business, bank business, in order to leverage on that infrastructure. Plus they have some investments in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique. So it's a very, very interesting company. If you believe that the management will be able, able to leverage the financial services business on the infrastructure, the parcel delivery from e-commerce on the infrastructure, then this could be a real winner. And while you wait, you get 4.5% in dividend. This is a very interesting company, Energias de Portugal. It's a utility, but what you can see from the company is stability over the last 10 years. They have been having stable net income, stable earnings per share, stable, slightly, slowly growing, dividends with an okay payout ratio. So if there is inflation, you get a utility that will protect you from inflation. They weren't affected by the crisis in Portugal five years ago. So it's really, really interesting. Dividend yield are almost at 6%. So there are good yields with good stable companies. Euro commercial, again, a shopping mall company, but Italy, France, much more luxurious. So still a high yield, so you have to see if you want to invest in France and Italy, if you prefer Eastern Europe, or if you prefer Netherlands that we'll discuss later. And now a very, very interesting company, Flow Traders. This is a Dutch algorithm trading company that makes 0.002.8% on each trade they make, but they make money, they haven't lost money in the last three years in any given day, so there are practically no risk traders. They trade mostly ETFs, especially ETFs that are in different time zones. So if you buy an ETF, let's say the International Emerging Market ETF now, the ETF cannot immediately buy it, all the assets. They have to wait that the market in China opens and that the market in Brazil opens. And flow traders take advantage of those differences in prices, trade, bring liquidity to the market, and use algorithms with very, very tiny profits. They have 140 traders that traded 719 billion in ETFs and another 700 billion in commodities last year. As the profit is very low, nevertheless, when you sum all those trades, the profit amounts to a significant amount of money. As I said, 34 months without a loss, so here is a quick take on Flow's advantages. Trades ETFs not interesting to other players like Citadel Securities, Emerging Markets, Small Cap ETFs. They will now take a similar approach, so just small, small percentage wins trading on currencies, so they could expand their business three, four times without a problem. And they have something very interesting. They provide over-the-counter ETF trading for major pension funds counterparties, 550 of them. So not everything is traded on a stock exchange. So for now, Flow, and you should investigate deeper if you're interested, is a riskless algorithm trading company. And they will benefit if the volatility increases, which at some point will have to increase, because now it's extremely low. So this is the minimum profitability for Flow. They will benefit from the currency trading if they manage to apply the same system they are using with ETFs. So from a perspective, we can easily see flow quadruple in the next decade. That's easy. However, there is always the risk. This reminds me of long-term capital management, same system as flow. We take pennies all over the world, and then Russia says, I won't pay you. And then the whole system collapses. So if one counterparty, an ETF or something happens, then 
we could see some risk. However, really deep investigation should be needed. Maybe we can do an interview with the management to see if it's really riskless. So we'll see how the interest goes. The final 6.08 yielder is Intesa, San Paolo Bank. It's an Italian bank. And I'm going to conclude here that never invest in Italian financial if it's not really extremely cheap. For 6%, I wouldn't touch it. No harm to my Italian watchers, but simply the risk reward there with 25% of loans subprime, mm, not for me. All right, this is the first part. I made it in two parts to segment it a little bit. So the second part will be in the same playlist. So I'm sure you'll find another 10 interesting stocks in the second list and perhaps you'll find something for your portfolio. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the second part.